right, we got it, we got it. Oh, you poor old thing. There's literally standing water on the intake. I know, I know. Finally, itinerary for this video, the leaf springs. Now, my rear axle pinion bearing is also going out on this uh, Dana 35 in here. So I got another Dana 35. This Dana 35 here came out of an 89 Pioneer Comanche. And because it's an MJ axle, you know, the leaf spring perches are all in the same spot. So, those, you know, the brakes look good on it and everything. This one's ready to get bolted right in. And this one has 355 gears. So... I guess that means in this video, I'm going to be replacing the leaf springs, swapping the rear axle, and changing the gear ratio in this truck. It's about time she gets some love. It's been sitting in my yard forever. Let's go take a look at what I'm talking about down here. So, this happened a while ago, and I <laughs> kind of stopped driving the truck after the leaf spring kind of just died. But it still supports its own weight. It still drove around the yard, you know. We've lost two of the four leaves. Well, two of the three, really, I should say. The bottom one is just a helper spring. It ain't doing anything right now. So I'm going to preemptively spray everything with a lot of peanut butter. You may notice it's pretty late in the day right now. I'm not going to even try to start on this project tonight. This is going to be a multi-day project. Maybe your first step is to jack it up and get the wheels off it, but... Uh... A little experiment out of sheer curiosity. I just kind of want to see how much life this spring has left in it before we start taking stuff apart. <laughs> we'll see what breaks first, the frame or the leaf spring. You know, I don't, I don't even know if the frame is integral enough to support the weight of the vehicle anymore. But uh, there she bottomed out. <laughs> oh. I don't know, man. Mint. All right, wheels are off. And the axle fell out of the truck. All right, I kind of realized by dropping the axle like that, I probably overextended the brake line and it probably needs a new brake line now. You know, I've been out of the game too long. Forgotten how to get shit done. All right, day two. Kind of got started on this side. Had to take the whole entire drum brake off to get the parking brake cable disconnected. Gonna have to disconnect those to get the axle out. Also got my main brake line disconnected. I got the shocks off of the axle side. And let's see what's next. I gotta take the drive shaft off and then I guess I'll finally start dealing with these leaf springs. That should be pretty much the whole deal. Everything under this truck is completely caked with gear oil. This, the pinion bearing is so bad that the seal doesn't seal. And it's also leaking from both axle seals, like the axle shaft seals. I mean, it may as well be leaking from the cover gasket. It's probably, there's probably no seal that's actually sealing on this axle. For whatever reason, I cannot get these off. I, I got the other side off, no problem. Okay, it should be down. Yeah, there we go. I, I don't know if you guys remember all the way back in like part two when I did the gas tank and I replaced this. I didn't buy this, the previous owner did, and he just hadn't put it on, so, you know, it was just kind of sitting in the truck. Uh, the reason he bought this yoke was because the original one, they they broke off one of the four 8mm bolts that hold the, uh, the U-joint in here, and they just tack welded it back on. So, you know, the next time the drive shaft came off, it would need a new yoke. There we go. In order to detach the parking brake cable from the drums, you basically have to disassemble the entire thing. I ain't, I ain't really a fan of drum brakes. Who is? But they ain't that bad. <laughs> okay, fight me now. I just complimented your existence. Now you're gonna fight me? No, you ain't. And we gotta get the... These doohickeys on up here. Oh, that's, that thing just fell. Yeah, this is all just crumbling apart. And I literally did these too. I, this is a 
less than two years old, this thing. Look at how rusty that is. And it's just like working its way down the stick like a plague. Okay, come on now. You can be a little bit less of a hassle. I know you can. The damn, this thing was rusted into the shoe. Okay. I wanna, I mean, I don't know which brakes I'm gonna use. I don't know if I'm gonna keep mine or just keep the ones on the new axle. They both look fine, but they're both drum brakes. So, we'll have to see. Everything's just falling apart. I'm... And yeah, simple as that. Lastly, we got to use the box end wrench to close the pins on whatever this thing is called. And honestly, you know, every time I see this in a video or whatever, they're always like, clever little trick. You can use a 13 millimeter wrench to do this instead of getting a special tool and well i don't even know i don't even know what the special tool is like the only way i've ever seen this done is with a 13 millimeter wrench they are so rusted it's hard to tell but i got a 13 16 on there and i'm gonna have to pull towards me oh my gosh Come on, tell me my peanut butter has been working. Come on. Yes. Dude, honestly, that is incredible. I mean, it's gonna be a whole nother deal getting the bolt actually out of that shackle. But I can just hammer on that because I ain't going to be reusing these bolts. You best believe. Look at all the rust that's already fallen off of this thing. <laughs> like the only reason the whole underside looks as good as it does is because that damn axle has been throwing gear oil all over it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, dude, I'm going to break my hand. <sighs> what I'm thinking is, if I can get it to spin, it should, like, break it free from the inside of the boot. And then I should have a much easier time hammering it out. I can't fit my really long breaker bar under here be nice if i had this up on a lift but i then again i probably wouldn't trust it to be worthy of standing underneath okay here we go Ugh. it's just twisting the whole shackle oh yeah okay well the good news about that is the other side definitely won't do it because that side still has a, a real leaf spring. Oh, something's moving somewhere. Ugh. And I know I'm, I'm tightening it, but it, it doesn't matter which way it spins. I can get a lot more strength if I pull on it versus if I'm pushing it. Oh, that didn't sound good. That. Ugh. That might have been good. I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Fear not. It was merely my ratchet breaking. Yep, she skipped some teeth, alright. 
Oh, this is supposed to be an impact rated ratchet, guys. It's painted black. What the hell? I'm thinking if I cut it in here, it'll get the head off and then it'll only be stuck on this side. And with the nut on here, I could like pry against the nut and maybe pull the bolt out. But then I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I even fussing with this one? This is the only bolt that doesn't need to come out to get the damn axle out. I'm wasting my time over here. So, uh, I was looking at this one, and, well, I better not have to remove the gas tank skid to get that nut off. I'm, well, <laughs> I know, I know. What I'm thinking is if I can loosen the bolt and get it to unscrew from the nut, you know, I might be able to hold the nut with a, like a box end wrench or something. Or if the nut is seized enough to the frame rail, the bolt might start unscrewing and pulling itself out of the leaf bushing. I don't know. We're going to see. Well, something turned. Now I've got a wrench on the back side. Something is turning. I can't see it from up here, but the camera should be able to. Oh. I used a hammer to drive the screwdriver into the flange of the bolt and that separated it ever so slightly and I was able to get my wrench and the nut off of the back side so it's coming out but uh, now I just got to figure out what to do next I was able to just barely fit a 3 4 wrench in there I had to hammer the wrench in you can see that's uh, that's part of the wrench. <laughs> that's how tightly I had to hammer it in there. And, uh, well, that didn't really do anything. It did pull it out a little bit more, you know, obviously because I had to hammer it so hard. Now I'm starting over from square one using tools how they're not supposed to be used. I'm hammering the screwdriver in behind the wrench. And I'm going to ever so slightly and slowly work that bolt out of there. Okay, screwdriver thing wasn't working. I used one of these earlier too. I kind of forgot to mention that. Uh, you may notice the wrench isn't in there anymore. Cause look, I got it out far enough to where it's, uh, you know, it doesn't fit in there anymore. So what I'm doing is with this hand, I'm pulling on the wrench. I don't want to put anything else on here for extra leverage because pulling this way on a wrench will break it. Ask me how I know. So, uh, obviously wrenches are meant to turn things, not pry things. But while I'm using the wrench to pry on the bolt, I'm also twisting it with this. Look at this shit. I can fit two wrenches in there now. Oh, she's coming there, yai. I am exhausted. Dude, I'm going to have to call it quits for the day. I, I mean, I, I got home from work and started doing this. Day three. The, uh... I got this one out. This is the only one that I didn't need to come out cooperatively. And it's the only one that came out cooperatively. It, ju it just came right out. Just, you know, I, un I unscrewed it and it just slid right out. Slid right out. The, I have all the nuts off of them, so that's good, but I cannot get the upper shackle bolts on either side. I cannot get them to move at all. I, I've already been at it for like two hours today. The only progress I've made is got that bolt out. This one, you might notice the damn frame is all screwed up now. I mean, it's almost out. It is, it's coming, but it just won't. Like, it's, it's putting up a fight to the last second to the very end 
So I'm gonna try putting axle grease in it. That's what I did for these ones up here. Just kinda, that's why they're all wet looking. I literally put axle grease in them, hoping that'll work a bit better than peanut butter, which I'm running out of. I kinda hoped I'd never need to use peanut butter again, but the rust stays. The sleeve that goes through the rubber bushing is seized to the bolt, which I don't know how that happened because you know, the bolt was coming out and obviously wasn't seized to the whatever. So my next plan is to uh is that. So with the with it cut off and barely sticking out on the other side, I just might be able to pry I might be able to pry this open enough for it to slide out. This is going to require both hands though. So this is working, but I just need to maneuver the leaf spring in and out. I need, you know, I need to work with it. And I can't do that while it's still attached to the axle. Now, I gotta, I do have to separate these, I realize. I, I need this plate. I'm gonna have to keep this. And ain't no way in hell those U-bolt things are coming off. Ain't no way. I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna cut the U-bolts. What I'm hoping I can do is with a cutoff wheel, just cut them straight down the middle and then hammer them, you know, sideways and then and then it should just fall off. <laughs> yes. Look at that. We don't even have to hammer them sideways. The damn tension of the of the nuts is going to just pop them off for us. How convenient and definitely not dangerous at all. I promise I'm wearing safety glasses right now. Well, that wasn't very eventful. There we go. See, now what I can do is use the entire leaf as a pry bar for itself. Oh yeah, this is gonna be really cold. I might have to shove the sawzall back in here and cut the bolt from the inside because it is still just a tad too long. That's a great thing to do right next to the gas tank. Well, I mean, it's getting it. I'm just pretty sketched out by the amount of smoke and sparks coming off of it. There she goes. That's what I thought. Yeah, this is a leaf spring that's reached the end of its days. You can see the metal bushing gave up on holding on to the rubber and started to come out with the bolt. All right, now we just gotta do the same thing again. I wanna say, don't do this on a Cherokee. This is a kind of a Comanche specific thing because on the MJ here, we have access to both sides of the eye bolt. On the XJ, the nut on the back side of that bolt is welded to the inside of the frame. So I wouldn't just go cutting these out if you're having trouble on an XJ. Like I said, very MJ specific stuff. Get out of here, Dana 35. Get this shit out of here. Well, let's see. Now comes the uh, challenge of getting the axle out of here. Because unlike the Cherokee, where you can just kind of pull it out, this one's sitting on top of the leaves. This is kind of all new to me. I've never done anything with leaf under axle. Uh, I should be able to scoot it out that way. I mean, I, I don't know. Come here, please. Come here. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Ow. 
Look at this thing. Maybe I could sell it. Huh? 307 gears, bad pinion bearing, busted off cover bolt, leaking wheel seals. Did I say 307 gears? It's a Dana 35. I mean, this is a perfectly usable boat anchor. Okay, look at the sheer amount of grease on this thing. Oh my God. It has been leaking gear oil for decades. That is disgusting. These U-bolts, yeah. Look at that, man. There's no way those would have come off. I would have been fighting with each one for four hours a piece. So I just, I knew I was going to cut these before I even started. Kind of hard to find Comanche U-bolts, if anybody even makes them. So these are for a YJ. These are literally just YJ U-bolts with a Dana 35. And uh, yeah, they're, they're the same. It's perfectly around the Dana 35. So there you go. If you need U-bolts for an MJ, I mean, they're the same in every aspect. YJ U-bolts. But as for getting the back half of these leaves out, I mean, because I, I still have, I still got that one to get out. <laughs> My God, every time I touch the truck, something falls off of it. Um, if I could just get those bolts to come out just a tad, just like an eighth of an inch, then I could cut off the head and I could cut off the back of the threads and the damn thing would fall out there. But they are just not moving. They spin they spin free of the bushing, but they do not move at all. I bet they're both seized to the metal sleeve in there. That's probably what's going on. So I need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what to do about these. See, it would make sense to just cut, you know, like through the rubber, cut here and cut here, and then it would just fall out. But the problem is you can't really do that because I'm pretty sure the, the metal sleeve sticks out as far as the rubber does. And you can't cut through that metal sleeve. Let's look at the new one. So, yeah, you can see that inner, the inner sleeve goes out just as far as the rubber does. So if, if you were to try to cut through that with a sawzall, you'd get stuck. It would just melt the blade. You can't, it's like reinforced steel or something. I've tried to cut these before. It does not work. And the damn blade is already melted from just cutting the bolt itself. I need a new blade on here. And I literally only cut twice with it. <laughs> you see, owner number three of this truck told me a long time ago that he tried to replace the leaf springs in it. And he got everything apart. He got the old leaves out. And he goes to put the new ones in, and they're the wrong size. They don't fit. They were either too long or too short. They were for like a, a Chevy S10 or something. Not the right springs. This was before Dorman was making them. And so he just put everything back together, you know, he just put the old leaves right back in because that was his only option. Now, I don't know for sure, but he might have put these bolts in backwards um, because it would be awfully convenient if the bolt head was on this side because then I'd have a lot more swinging room to hit on it with a hammer because there wouldn't be a damn fender in the way. That and... I thought of this too. Ball joint press the bolt right out. But it has to go on backwards in order for that to work. And it can't because there's not enough room between the fender. Like I need a shorter rod on here. I'm good luck finding that. So uh I don't know. Dude, what if I just cut a hole? In the fender right there because the damn thing's gonna rust apart anyway look at that shit it is kind of hard to see but i cut out some rubber and i can see the edge of the sleeve the camera really can't but i can see it i promise you i think there is enough room for me to get the sawzall blade on the edge of that sleeve and hopefully not cut it but cut around it I've got a new blade on here, and this one was apparently made in Switzerland, and I know Swiss people like to cut things, so let's see. So I cut a little bit of the rubber on the other side, and that metal sleeve goes right up against that flange. Right there. I don't know if this idea is going to work. Day four. The idea didn't work. I managed to fit the saws on here and cut out this side of the threads. 
And this is what I got left over here, okay? I've just been using this damn thing. Because, I, like I said, the Sawzall cannot cut that steel sleeve. It just can't. So, I spent the past hour trying to destroy this bolt head as much as possible. I mean, you know, I'm mangling up the whole leaf spring mount and everything, but... That's what remains of the bolt, and it's still holding it in there as if it was brand new, man. Hours. Hours, I tell you. I finally got it out, and it only cost me permanently damaging the leaf spring mount. You know, there's a whole bunch of cuts in it, because I wasn't exactly using scientific measures to do this. I just there, I got to a point where I just got so mad at it, I didn't care anymore. I didn't care how many sparks were flying on my bare skin. That hurt. I just, oh my god. I hate rust so much. Day five. I'm in the same situation with this side. You can see the sleeve goes all the way to the very edge on, on the one side. But I do have threads showing on this side. So I can cut this side, no problem. This side, not so much. And this time, the damn tailpipe's in the way. Oh yeah, I got it. It took me two hours on this one bolt. Two hours of cutting. This is part of that metal sleeve. I mean, I must have spent an hour on this alone. Went through three sawzall blades to cut this little piece off. And then I hit it with a punch to open it up like this. And then I got it off of the bolt. And then I was able to just cut the bolt. Oh my God. Some other video I saw out there taught me a clever trick to find the arch of your leaf springs. Just put the uh, eye bolts on a straight line with each other, like with this crack in the concrete. Then you take the center point and measure to that crack of concrete. So these have got 10 inches in them, the old ones. And the new ones do too. So even after all these years, the original leaf still held their original arch. Literally the only reason these went bad is because they rusted out and broke. The metal got brittle. But these, I mean, these were still ready to go, man. Perfectly usable leaf spring for sale. No, I'm just kidding. Damn. You might also notice that the shackle over here is notably shorter. Nobody makes MJ leaf shackles anymore. So, what you can do is order, I think, two-inch lift shackles for an XJ. And they're the same as an MJ shackle. 2 inch lift XJ shackles, but what I did was just got stock XJ shackles. They're a lot shorter, but uh, these brand new springs are going to have the truck sitting up a little bit higher in the back, and since it's, you know, an 80s truck that doesn't weigh anything, it's going to look stanced almost, and even with those old Leafs, it did sit higher in the back. It just kind of naturally did, so I'm not trying to do any sort of Carolina squat and lower to back end. I just think with an XJ shackle, it's going to look more level. But we'll see when I get it all together. But before we put in our brand new leaf springs, there is one more thing I need to do. The speedometer gear. I believe this is a half inch. I've never done this on a cable driven one. Oh yeah. This is all very different. Look at this. Hopefully I don't break anything. Come on. All right. What do we got here? A, a 30 tooth gear came out of there. Putting in a 33 tooth. I don't know, something doesn't feel right to me. I don't feel like that's how it's supposed to sit in there. It didn't really click in or anything. But I put a new O-ring on here, so I don't know. I'll just, we'll just send it see what happens. The cable ones are a bit different than the electronic ones, but I got it in its little notch. You know, I, I turned it until it stopped, so presumably the gear's teeth are meshed with the output shaft. 
I don't know. I feel like I screwed something up, but we'll never know if the speedometer works if the truck's never moving. So back to the grind. A little bit of prep work to do on this junkyard axle. So once again, this came out of another Comanche. It was a 1989 Pioneer short bed 4 liter automatic. So it's got 355 gears in it. It apparently has 220,000 miles, which is 100,000 more miles than this truck has. So uh, I hope it's not in any worse shape than my axle is. <laughs> But uh, I think I'm going to keep my brake lines because they look a little bit better than these. I'm not too sure. Depends how cooperative these ones are. But uh, I'm not going to keep this rubber hose because this is very clearly dry rotted. I'm not going to chance that. I know I, I've replaced my rubber hose. I left it on the truck. Uh, I believe in part two. That sounds familiar. Oh, okay. Well, they still got some brake fluid in them. All right. All right, oh my God. I get this T-block off of here. And now when I took this thing off of my truck, this bolt broke inside the axle. So I had the thing zip tied there for the longest time. I mean, the zip ties work fine. Nothing wrong with the zip ties. Oh my God, the thing was already loose. They must have, uh, they must have thought about taking it off at the junkyard, but then just decided to cut the brake line instead. Alright! So that's an upgrade right there. I'll be able to use the uh, existing mount for the T-block piece. And then the other thing is the little breather thing. little breather hose for the axle. This one did not have the little plastic insert that goes right here. Look at this. Apparently it comes in two pieces. I don't know. It's just a little plastic fitting. It doesn't... There we go, okay. Another thing I may as well do is get the cover off, put some fluid in it. I got a new cover gasket for it. Oh, they, do, they did tell me at the junkyard that they always take the covers off of these just to make sure that the gears are okay. And so therefore it does not have any fluid in it currently. Look at this, the tag is still legible just barely but right here in the bottom left corner 3.55 that's exactly what i wanted to see looks like it sat for a while i don't know if you guys can see but you can very clearly note where the uh fluid level was looks all right though no sign of catastrophic failure. Very unique for a Dana 35. I mean, it looks all good. I don't see any chewed teeth. The spider gears are functioning as they should. Non C clip axle, that's kind of cool. Only a little bit of play in it, a little bit of backlash. It just looks like it, it was sitting for a while. So I wonder why. That truck went to the yard. You know, after five days of taking stuff apart, it feels very good to be putting stuff back together. Some of you may wonder what I'm going to do about the front axle to match the gearing in this one well the answer for now is nothing because the when i when i first drove this truck down here uh if you remember in in part 15 i had i took out the front drive shaft because i was trying to narrow down some uh grinding noises some wheel bearing sounding noises and uh i never put the front shaft back in that drive shaft sat in florida ambient atmosphere for six months and ended up seizing up so i gotta either rebuild the front drive shaft again or get a different one i don't even want to bother messing with that damn thing because uh, you know if i get a new drive shaft and then the peugeot transmission gives out then i'm just gonna need a different front drive shaft for an ax15 swap anyway i don't well i don't even know if they're different it's just a whole bunch of stuff I don't feel like dealing with. 
So the truck hasn't had four wheel drive ever since I left Wisconsin because the damn front drive shaft broke. So for now, I'm just not going to have a front drive shaft. <laughs> Maybe someday far in the future, I might, I don't know, I might either put a Dana 30 in it with matching gears or I might two wheel drive swap the thing. I don't know. I have a feeling that's going to be very far down the road, though, so don't get your hopes up. For now, it's just going to be a rear-wheel drive truck with a Dana 30 in the front. <laughs> yeah. It worked. Okay. I don't know how you're supposed to do this, but I just kind of have the axle sitting on top of a jack so I can slide the leaps under it. And then I just got to loosely put the shackle into the mount, just like that. I now realize that I don't have any new eye bolts for the front, so I'm going to have to go to the hardware store and get some. Well, this is the best they have. It's not quite as long, and it uses metric threads instead, but I'm hoping we'll have enough threads to work with. I don't know. We'll see. But I got the U-bolts on. They're all kind of loosely holding the axle in place. So now it's just a matter of lining those up. Everything is loosely in. Got these U-bolts tightened up, and these... Spring plates down here, I mean, I should have really, you know, rust protected them, you know, paint them, whatever. Eh, I don't care. Look at the rest of the truck. I don't care. It's all in. Now, I might foresee having a problem with these XJ shackles because they're going to want to, they're going to want to go that way instead of backwards. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I might have to shove something in here. So how I'm going about this is, you know, if I if I jack the axle up, it's going to push the shackle farther up this way because it's not the right shackle. So what I'm doing is if I if I pull on the leaf spring good enough, you know, I kind of have to lay right under it, right where the camera is. I pull on the leaf spring while jacking it up, and if I can get it past that threshold where it wants to push it backwards, it'll go. I got the other side. And the bolts are, you know, loosely tightened, as I would say. But I, I can't, there's nowhere I can put the camera, because I kind of have to lay everywhere to do all of this. Look at this. The weight of the truck is on the leaves. Oh my god, I'm so excited. And exhausted, I'm tired, man. So these go to, best I could find, like 80 to 90 foot-pounds on the U-bolts. Uh, you, you know, you got to torque this stuff when it's under load. So now I'm going to do the eye bolt and the shackle bolts, and I can already kind of tell it, it looks like it is going to sit a little bit lower. But it should be only about one to two inches, but we'll see, we'll see. These front bolts that I had to run to the hardware store to get, I mean, they're just barely long enough. It's pretty much flush with the end of the threads. So that's not very much wiggle room. And, you know, if I was actually going to use this truck for some truck things, I'd be a lot more concerned about that. But the damn thing just sits in my yard all day, so, I mean, come on now. I put some thread locker in there, too. So, I'm just going to go for a drive around the block when I'm done, and then come back and retorque everything. And then retorque it pretty much every time I drive it after that, uh, until everything settles in. High bolts up front. And the upper shackle bolts go to 100 foot-pounds, or like 105 or something like that. And the, and the lower shackle bolts go to 80 or something like that. Uh, it's very hard to find information like this for Comanche-specific stuff. So that's just what I'm going with. With at least the U-bolts torqued down, put the shocks back on. Now we can put on the brake line thing. And for the first time in years, this shall be properly bolted down. Wow, look at that. Okay, and then brake line time.
also something you never want to forget when you know swapping an axle or something is to put fluid in it listen so i'm going to try to put the drive shaft in you know i bought some of these things to go on here and one of them is not the right size look at that there's what how, how do you just like package the wrong thing Dorman explain yourself I'm gonna have to just use one of the old ones I guess even the bolts that go with this strap are not the right right size they don't fit in there they're too big that is such a weird thing. Like, like one of them was the right part, but the other one in the same package was not. How, how do I get lucky enough to find shit like this? Like, this is probably a one in a million thing. That probably never happened, you know? Whoever was packaging these on the damn assembly line was probably high out of their mind on a Friday night waiting to go home, you know? Could find shit like this, but I can't win the lottery. Well, I was putting together a drum brake, and I ran into some good news and bad news. The good news is, I got the parking brake connected on this side, so that's all good. The bad news is, as soon as I hooked everything up, the wheel cylinder revealed to me that it is completely seized inside. Probably because the truck that this axle came out of, as evidenced earlier by looking at the axle, it probably sat for a really long time, and I bet the wheel cylinder seized up internally. Stepping on the brake pedal doesn't do anything. Like, I was hoping it would shoot out the, you know, it would just, like, pop and, like, shoot these out of here. But, no, nah, it's it's completely done for. So, I thought, hey, man, why, why don't I just take the wheel cylinders off of my other axle, right? Because these are only two years old, at most. I mean, already look at them. They freaking look like they've been at the bottom of the damn ocean, Wisconsin. So, I try to remove the brake line, and it strips. And then I try to remove the bolts, and they both strip, too because they're so goddamn rusty. So, two year old parts from Wisconsin are too rusty and freaking 35 year old parts from Georgia are coming out just fine. I, I'm so glad I don't live there anymore. Well, just cause I got impatient and realization that I'm not gonna be able to do anything for a couple more days. Figured I'd see if the axle moves. The transmission's actually in neutral right now, fun fact. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's your there's your Peugeot for you. But the axle seems to work properly. I mean, the drive shaft spinning. There's... Eventually, it did stop. Must have been the thick gear oil in here. Okay. Oh yeah. She's ready to go, boys. <laughs> That's kind of funny to watch. <laughs> I mean, we can also see if our differential is differentiating. You can see through the hole where the uh, wheel cylinder used to be. A rhythmic pattern where a hole in the face where the wheel mounts do goes by, right? So if we stop this side, you can see the other, the other side spins twice as fast. When I let go, it goes back to spinning at the same speed. So our differential is definitely differentiating. And if I <laughs> if I spin this one fast enough, it actually gets the other one to stop <laughs> and or go backwards. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool, man. Huh. All right, well, I mean, at least the damn axle works. I will report back when I have the brakes ready to go. Day nine, I finally got everything all assembled. You might notice the parking brake link is missing because it's not gonna work. Whatever piece this is that came with the new axle, it's not the right part. It's too long and so the shoes stay too far separated from each other and you can't get the drum on. So it seems like every time I fix something on this truck, I gotta sacrifice something else. And this time it's gonna be the parking brake. Whatever, I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna worry about that later. I got the brakes bled very amateurishly by myself. There's still a lot of air in the lines. I'm gonna worry about that later because I just wanna drive the thing. I figured I'd buy new drums because all four of the drums I had were insanely rusted out, so 
you know, I had to order new wheel cylinders anyway, so I replaced all the hardware in both sides too. Finally, after all these years, here it is back on its own wheels. It is still sitting pretty high up in the back, despite using XJ shackles, but that's exactly why I used XJ shackles. It'll settle down after a few days, and I'll probably buy some sandbags for it, but uh, come on. Oh, before I go anywhere, while I was waiting for the brake parts, I may or may not have cut out the muffler and installed a cherry bomb. So... There is a bonus video linked in the description if you care about that. Well, I haven't driven it since Leaf Springs, the muffler, and a different gear ratio. Shit. So there's going to be a lot of stuff to take in all at once. Probably going to feel like a different truck. I really hope the brakes can stop it. Oh, they can't. Okay, we're good. Probably can't hear the muffler very well from inside the cab here, but... Let's see how these 355s feel then, shall we? Oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> I wonder what the hell that was. Oh, well. Oh, 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 yes! It feels like I'm in low gear. Oh, <laughs> yes! Oh, my, let's go backwards, bro. That is, that is what this truck needed. <laughs> well, the speedometer doesn't work. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Oh my god. This is so much nicer. Oh my god, it's so much nicer than 307s. <gasps> dude, it's like, it's like being dehydrated for like months and then you finally drink like like pure cold water just so refreshing oh my god oh that is yeah the dude the back end is is stiff it's responsive that is nice i mean the thing used to sway like a boat you know especially with the before i put the shocks in now with brand new shocks and brand new leaves it feels like a truck now instead of just like an old shit box it's nice i mean i would have done this a long time ago if i could man that's what this truck needed. Damn. <laughs> I can take turns nice and slow in third gear now. faster but they're not probably aren't even in mesh 
that's what I'm willing to bet is going on, but that's something I'm just worried about later. Oh, I'm just, I'm so happy the thing can move now. It, it literally hasn't driven anywhere since January. It's been four months. You know, I was feeling bad for it. I still do feel bad for it. It's a good truck, you know? It's just, oh my God, I don't know. I don't know how much more of this effort I can keep putting into it. But it is nice when it finally pays off. Highway time. Speaking of low gear, because my XJ is still two-wheel drive, it's been a long time since I've actually felt low gear, especially with 355s. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what I like to see. Yeah, it's obnoxious, man. I love that torque. Look at all the rust we left behind. Your boys. I done fixed it. I literally just couldn't get the gear to mesh with the output shaft. That's all it was. Said to keep clocking it until, I, I don't know, I went on like four test drives, but I finally got it. Is there anything more free? A Dodge, a Chevy, and a Jeep walk into a bar. I don't know, there's a joke in there somewhere. The joke is the Jeep. Look at this pretender. Well, hey, if anybody stuck around in the video for this long, I know it was a bit of a behemoth. It took me forever to do this job and I don't like to cut things out that might help somebody else out. Not that anybody's really replacing leaf springs on Comanches anymore, but uh, I want to do a little experiment, okay? So I, I have a request of you if you have watched this video. I don't ever run mid-roll ads, but I hear rumors that even if you have them turned off, YouTube will put mid-roll ads in anyway. And if that's the case, then I may as well just run mid-roll ads so that I'll actually get the revenue from them. So uh, if there were any mid-roll ads in this video, if you could please just let me know. Because uh, I got some shit to raise with YouTube if that's the case. If there wasn't though, that's good means the channel is performing exactly how I'd expect it to. 